morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to video message number 29. Pair of panties. That's what we eat. Would you be quiet, Rosie? Are you through, Mr. Wizard? The juice is loose. Listen up, the ratings just came in for last month. We are number one. We just grabbed every key demographic. Super, yeah. Super duper. That's nice. Way to go. Neat okay. Yes. Boy. That is good news. It is the 27th day of March, 2024. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday morning on the Power Trip Morning Show. What do we got today? Well, somebody we like to call the dude. His name is Mark Duvell. He'll be in here. He's got a podcast called What's Your Mount Rushmore? We'll talk about that momentarily. Music and much, much more at about 6.30 this morning. Mark Rosen will be in a cast of thousands. No perish today. We miss him. We love him. Good guys. We'll see you real soon, my friend. Uh, but let's get her started. Here's some comedy from Don McMillan. It's the Power Trip Morning Show. On a Wednesday morning, you come on in. I'm glad you're here. Yeah, I found this chart. They took a survey. They said, what's the first thing you do when you get out of bed in the morning and this year? And they said, uh, 34% of people read email, 23% check weather, 20% post to social media, 17% read news, 6% check markets. Life has changed so much just from 25 years ago. Let's go back to 1995. If you ask the same question, what is the first thing you do when you get out of bed in the morning? 97% of people would say, I pee. <laughs> the good old days when we had time to pee in the morning? <laughs> now we have all kinds of things to do. By the way, 3% of people would say, I changed the sheets because I peed them. That was the other one. <laughs> Is that progress? I don't think that's progress. <laughs> <laughs> come over the last couple of decades. Do you remember back in the day when we had interns like Babyface? If the uh, if the car doors froze shut, he would just call in and say, I can't make it to work. My car is frozen shut. Yeah, I can't yeah. And we'd say, what do you mean your car is frozen shut? Have you tried, I don't know, anything or everything? Try right. something. Yeah. My doors are frozen shut. I can't get into my car. Well, at least now that doesn't hold up because Zach just texted us, what, 20 minutes ago saying... My rear left door won't latch. Yeah. My rear left door right. won't latch. Right. 20 years yeah. ago, that would have been, can't make it in. Yeah, Gotta correct. Going down. back to bed. Don't want to risk it. Right, but I got to at least give Zach credit. He says, uh, ordering an Uber now will be in as soon as I can. Luckily, he doesn't live in Minneapolis. <sighs> True. Yeah. He lives in uh, White Bear Lake, Minnesota. Yeah. Somebody pick him up. Did somebody pick him up. Yeah. He's out there thumbing it. Yeah, well, while he waits on the Uber. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. He's not hitchhiking. No, 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 no. No. Uh, well, Brett made it in though. He did. Your left rear door hatched. Yeah, I, um, your back door's not frozen shut, is it? Correct. Oh, hatched, yeah. latched. No. Um. Anyway, indoor man. parking worth every penny. Man, I bet. Yeah. The, I bet paparazzi's having a hell of a time out there taking pictures of Zach as yeah. he's frustrated this morning. Correct. Because when he gets here. You know how Zach's going to be. Flustered. Yeah. Pissed. Yeah, pissed. Pissed. And Especially because paparazzi follows him everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Not the paparazzi, a guy that goes by Papa Razzi. Yeah, he's an Italian dude that uh, has a pizzeria yeah. in White Bear Lake. Just call in and it'll be, I don't know. Oh, I just no. came up with it. Yeah, uh, that'd be give me great. <laughs> that'd be great. Hello. Yeah. Hello, this is a paparazzi. Hi, Papa. How are you? I'm freezing. <laughs> oh, Why? I've been out here taking pictures of a young man fingering his blood. <laughs> oh, my. How? Hello? Hey, Paparazzi, can I ask you one quick question? Oh, please. I in, in, have you ever changed your name legally? <laughs> Why? Who do I sound like? You sound a lot like another Italian uh, man I once knew on the show named the Italian French Fry. No, that was a no man. That oh. was a French Fry. He's a my cousin. 
Do you know Ricky Rubio, sir? <laughs> dude, you got you got me you got me laughing yesterday, dude. Martin Moist, you the first couple of like the first forty five seconds, you were like six octaves higher than you normally yeah. are, and then you had to like reel in yeah. the character yeah, and right. get back to his normal voice. That's why I was like, man, you sound different. You're like, why do I sound different? Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> you, I know. you forgot I know. the voice. I know. I know. It's, uh, oh I've been, uh, man! Yeah, who I don't cares? Know. I've been watching too much of that damn uh, Vanderpump Rules. I sound like Jax's wife you, at the very beginning. You're hooked on that. Vanderpump? Yeah, I'm hooked, man. Oh no! I know all about it now. Actually, I've seen uh, just a few episodes, but I know all about it now. That's right. You and I are time traveling because I'm I'm binging a season of Survivor with the kiddo because the kiddo's hooked on it now. Oh man, so first season's the best season. We're, we started with for her. We started with season thirty three or whatever. It's the it's whatever the one is that's on Netflix. You know, Netflix yeah. doesn't have the entire series; oh, right? it just yeah. has a season yeah. or two. So we just started with thirty three, and she freaking loves it. So you time traveled back. You're apparently binging Vanderpump from the beginning. Yeah, they started a new show, like where um, like they're all old now. Because mm-hmm. I tried to watch, because I don't get it, you know, like, I don't know why people care. So I started at the very first season of Vanderpump because they're short episodes, right? So you can throw it on and you can be doing things like came in, coming up with terrible names for football players <laughs> as you're watching it, right? right? Yeah. And so I'm watching it. And then I saw that there was a new season of a new show called The Valley. Oh. That's the same characters only now. Yeah. And the first episode was the other day. So I'm like, okay, cool. Wonder what these people look like now. Like 15 years later, guess what? Not good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because they can all afford plastic surgery. Oh, no. Yeah. And it took me, like one of the characters, Corey, I didn't know was her until halfway through the episode. That's how much plastic surgery she's had over the 15 years. That sucks. Her name is like Shanista or something like that. Or Yeah. It's Shasta. Yeah. She's from the soda company. I don't think that's right. <laughs> anyway. Remember Shasta? Oh, yeah. Man, uh, those people are rich just for being famous. And they're famous just for being famous. Yeah, pretty cool. And I know I'm not breaking any news America. Yeah, but it's just really weird because none of them are talented at anything. No, No. (laughs) think think of the percentage of people that are on uh, social media that that, uh, would fit as well. There's a handful of people that are super good at what they do on social media. Then there's a whole bunch of people that are just famous for being famous. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Um, whatever. My wife, my, my wife, wife, my wife. <laughs> loves, go on, Borat loves any show on Bravo. Right? She just loves it. Right? Oh, That's her uh, thing. Bravo. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, she turned the valley off last night. Oh, That's how why? Bad. I got to talk to her about it. <laughs> it's bad. Vanderpump I need some girls sucks. to talk to about the this. valley sucks. But what do you like? And they'll be the show. No, no me too. Shows. But I know. But what show do you like? Am uh, I? Am I watching the wrong show? I thought you liked Vanderpump. No, I no, I like uh, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Ah, uh, son of a bitch! Yeah, Did Vanderpump's I... terrible. I tried to. I wanted to have conversations with you and the girls. Yeah, well, watch then watch uh, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. You'll like it. A lot of large uh, boobs. Well, there's and a lot of sassy those in this one rich too. women. You like sassy women? I tell you what, though, man, I couldn't. I mean, I'm. 53. So it makes sense that I don't understand these sons of bitches, right? But those guys are all the heaviest flow douchebags. Yep. Yeah. Like, totally. especially Jax. Jax that guy's sucks. a douche. He yeah. sucks. It's, it's, what we, it's what I talked about when I was in my 20s. When I would go to bars and see guys like that and they would be doing really well with women, I'd be like, I, I don't I don't relate to this guy at all. I can't be like that guy. Oh so I just wasn't and then I was single for almost a decade. Oh, if that's I, the yeah. kind of uh, dude... That gets uh, some success, I, then I guess I just am I'm gonna die alone. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Yeah. Like I, I hate those kind of guys. Yeah. Why are you wearing a suit at eleven o'clock at night? I, I don't know. Right. He, in the very Good first luck to him. I season, hope they're having fun. Back in the old days, he wore a heavy sweater every day because I don't think he knew it was hot outside. Yeah. That's how silly he is. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, they all, all the ladies suck. have had boob jobs, so there's a plus there. Yeah. It's uh. Uh, I came into the bedroom last night when oh, yeah. my wife was watching like the last 15 minutes of Vanderpump. Oh. Christmas Story is better than Vanderpump. Oh, now why do you, like, that hurts me. Like You got to watch Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Okay, you'll like cool, that. But I will watch it if you promise me you'll stop saying terrible things about my favorite movie of okay, Christmas time. deal. 
Because you can not like it, but you don't have to say things. Like, <laughs> like you can think my baby isn't pretty, Aww. but don't walk up and tell me how ugly it is. <laughs> okay. I won't. Okay. Yeah, just say it's breathtaking. Yeah, yeah it's breathtaking. Yeah. Lie. Oh, there's Zach. Hey, hey it's Zach. Hey, How's your back door? Hello. Is your door uh, latched? It is latched. Oh, did you get her? So did you? Did you drive? So in? Shortly after that text, I as I was waiting for, because you know, I, there's not apparently a lot of people looking to drive from White Bear Lake to St. Louis Park for. I don't even know how much that would be for them because it was going to be thirty dollars, but I was able to cancel it before because enough jiggling with the. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. keep yeah. yeah. jiggling. The lock latch, and then just oh, yeah, shake it a little bit. Just sitting there outside in the cold. <laughs> For, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, just uh, fun start to the day. I don't think that'll throw you off the rest of the day. I think you're going to be fine now. No, everything's great, especially the, the whole, uh, everybody driving uh, about average of 40 miles an hour on the freeway well, today, too. Well, it's out there, brother. Yeah. I, I guess I, I, I don't know, maybe it is. Oh, yes. I didn't feel it, but. Oh, well, that's not I your I guess problem. I've got some really good tires or something, even though I'm. Recall buying the cheapest ones that, that I could find, but whatever. Maybe I guess I'm just an amazing driver. But you know what, Zach? If you don't straighten up, you're never going to be on Vanderpump. Yeah. Actually, I think you want to go the other way if, to get on Vanderpump. Was oh, that right? <laughs> I don't think you want to straighten up to get on that. Show. Maybe you're right. <laughs> From what I heard. Is that true? Because uh, all the straight ones on there are kind of terrible. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. He, that's yeah. right. He's got a good point. What I've heard. Awful. Yeah, I don't know. Old I don't Sandy know if I or like something. That attitude, though, all the straight ones. Yes, I'm not, I love them a blanket all. statement yes. that was. Yeah, there's one guy who's on the Valley who is the uh, who is an, uh, a gay gentleman who um, gets uh, physically angry when people talk about straight sex, and it makes me it makes me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> what? He doesn't like it. <laughs> doesn't like hearing about it. Yeah, he don't want to hear about it. Don't want to hear about us being gross. And it's he's right. When I do it, it's gross. Well, I guess that's fair, because if, if you were to hear about gay sex, I guess you would probably uh, take turn notes. It up, turn it up. <laughs> I mean, turn be it grossed up. out? Yeah. <laughs> that's what I meant to say. What did I say? Interesting. Uh, if you had oh, Vanderpump man. Rules talk on the Power Trip Morning Show's first segment today, you win bingo. Somebody won the Powerball. They sure did. Somebody from New Jersey. So somebody probably from the Jersey Shore. Another set of people that are really have people to look up to, right? Be like them. One point one three billion dollars, wow. yeah. New Jersey, the winner of uh, that was the Mega Millions, right? That mm-hmm. was the Mega Powerball tonight, I think. Yeah, the fifth yep. largest jackpot in Powerball history is up for grabs tonight. Eight six five tonight. Eight sixty five. I already got my tickets for it. I'm ready for that one. I was I was a little yeah. disappointed when I woke up this morning and was not a billionaire. That's all right. But then I moved on. You know, I figured yeah. you know what? I just do weird things to my face, and I I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I'd get bored having all that money, and I would buy myself an enormous set of jugs. Yeah, you would. And I would put them on my chest. Why wouldn't you just Jesus. get a, a gal and just pay for hers? <sighs> you yeah. know what comes along with that? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, there goes all your money. <laughs> no, no, um, it's not, no, you can have that. The numbers <laughs> were 7, 11, 22, 29, 38, and the uh, Mega Ball was four. You know what pisses me off? I was one off on each of those. Yeah. yeah. That's sad, Hawk. Yeah. I'm sorry you missed that out on that. real close. Real close. Yeah, I'm sorry you missed out on that. That's all right. We've always got Vanderpump. No. <laughs> yeah, that was 30 straight drawings without a winner in the Mega Millions. Yeah. That was the eighth largest in U.S. lottery history. $1.13 wow. billion. Is that right? That is right. Is that right? So cash payout right around uh, $537.5 million. A little over a half a billion dollars. Jeez. Can I ask you a question, Cor? Go on. Uh, you guys are all younger than me. I'm going to ask you one more question about Vanderpump. I swear to God, I'll move on. Because here's something that confused me. And Zach, I'm going to ask you too. And sure. even you, Brett, I'm bringing you into this picture, okay? Okay. Why do the ladies of that generation cry all the time? And 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 is that not realistic to reality? Like, for instance, does Angie cry every time the door opens at your home? Yeah, but that's that's a really bad example because I'm the one that's walking through the door. Oh, you know that's a good mean? point. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, and yeah, that does make so, me cry. So don't, I, I wouldn't let her. Tonight. No, I hmm. I don't I don't want to speak for an entire generation of women, but my guess is it's just those women. Okay, the California kind of women. I don't think that's the same case as that generation here in Minneapolis. I would hope not. I think that's a West Coast thing. No. 
Yeah. Am I, am I guessing correctly or not? I uh, think you are. The, feels the like show a West Coast is thing. fully staged. How dare yeah. you? <gasps> yeah. So what you're saying is those women are fantastic actors. They're something. Wow. Okay. Boy, you got a lot of hatred for things I like. <laughs> I Not everything. I like gambling. And you like that uh, <laughs> baby <laughs> making thing? Uh, <laughs> Crack game. Crack game. <laughs> has made so <laughs> many appearances on this show you in the like last couple of weeks. Uh, <laughs> you baby like, making thing. <laughs> dude, die, die, die. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who erased that he was employee of the year? <laughs> yeah, remember that? Yeah, remember, who erased that? Remember he was in the IR newsletter? <laughs> yeah. He was invited to the digital summit. He, he crushed it. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he booked so many accounts. Yeah, he didn't die, hide die in the. Digital. Yeah, he didn't hide in the office. <laughs> oh God! All right. All right. When's a dude getting here? Uh, he gets here about six fifteen. Man, the I haven't dude, seen that guy in forever. He's the best. So okay, so I'm gonna the give dude. you guys a list of things. He, you know, because his podcast is called "What's on Your Mount Rushmore." Uh, the episode with me on to talk about concerts. It, it drops today. It's he and John Hansen. It's great. It's real fun. And um, they, but they've I haven't done seen a bunch. John Hansen in forever. I either. know. Well, he lives in Arizona, so you won't see him today. Oh, does he really? Yeah. Uh, but um, so I'm going to give you a list of things they've already done their Mount Rushmore for. You don't have to give me four, mm-hmm. but some of them are like your Mount Rushmore of fast food joints. Mm-hmm. Like if you only got four, what four would you choose? It's easy to get one, two, and three, but that fourth one's a mm-hmm. bitch. So quick, <laughs> and we can do this again when he gets here in like 30 minutes. But so the dude used to work here. Yeah. Way back in the day. Oh yeah. And the dude, I don't know if he wants us to tell all the stories we used to tell about him. Well, I guess he probably wants us to forget a couple of them. But he has a couple of iconic power trip stories. Is he this? He's the Alcatraz, Alcatraz guy. Yeah. And let me say, we tell one of the iconic stories at the end of the podcast. And that would be the one that took place while I was singing a song at Diamonds. Did Which you know? I also remember that story uh, as yes. well. <sighs> He's one of the best real estate agents in the Twin Cities. He's just a disaster. But he used to be a disaster. At least used to be. <laughs> and Zach, you've never met him, right? No. The craziest I haven't thing. either. Wait, oh, you've never met the dude? No. What? Was he gone before you got here? Yeah. Oh, really? Man, that seems weird. That's a whole different thing. Is the generation. arm thing still true? Does that hold up? Is the what? The arm thing. Oh, uh, yes. So he was a pitcher. I haven't seen A I baseball actually. pitcher in high school or college, maybe even, right? Uh, high school. And I don't know if I had ever seen two forearms... Different sizes as much as this guy. It literally it looked like Popeye on one arm and you know olive oil on the other. It was crazy. Yeah. Uh, so he was literally on pace to be a big league pitcher. I mean, he was great, and then he just destroyed himself uh, throwing high school yeah. baseballs. Yeah. If, if you've been listening to the Power Trip Morning Show since day one, I think a lot of you will remember the Alcatraz story. So <laughs> oh, that yeah. guy oh, yeah. will be here. Uh, yeah. And he probably doesn't want us to tell that story again. I think again. he doesn't mind. I oh, okay. really don't think he okay. might. More of the Power 2 Morning Show after this on The Fan. The Fan. The Power Hour begins at 8 a.m. You can watch it at kfan.com slash watch. And it's powered by Quantum Fiber, your world unleashed. Hey, tomorrow's the day. Tomorrow night. We're tomorrow at Treasure night. Island Resort oh, and Casino. Yeah. Big day tomorrow. 7 to 9 p.m. Got a bunch of games lined up. Going to be a lot of fun. Initials at about 8.30 tomorrow night on stage at uh, Treasure Island. One of you is going to win a trip for two to Las Vegas. Because five of you get to play. And the winner gets a trip for two to Las Vegas with the power trip. And we leave in, what, three weeks from today? Holy balls. Two weeks from today or three weeks? Two weeks from today. Two weeks from today, man. Two weeks from today. What's going on? Holy moly. Is that real? Oh, my. Yeah. Hell yeah. That'll be great. Two weeks from today. Yeah, man. And I don't believe anybody has scheduled who's going to fill in for us that day. No, I, I remember we talked to Abbott a little bit about it. He put a note on his desk. I assume it's going to be almost everybody that's not coming with us and that it, wants to do that Wednesday show. Whether it could it's be everybody. Lieber, Marnie. Rosie's not leaving till the afternoon. He could. So Rosie could do it. Maybe Creasel. There's a lot of people that could do it. He ain't going to do that. No, he's got a pack. Probably not. Um, Maybe Parrish. Oh, yeah. Perry's not going. I know. It's crazy, man. The time's flying. Well, Dob will be there. Oh, God. That's good. That's good. I, I, I am. Uh, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. I don't know. No, Tommy. Hey, Tommy. Hey, Tommy. <laughs> What's that from? Crackhead Bob. No. What is it from? <laughs> um. I don't, I don't know. know. I guess I don't either. Yeah, and I'll be uh, down with the the wild before the. Uh, oh yeah. 
uh, before the big tilt at Treasure Island. They're in well. big trouble now, Zacho. They're nine spot points back now, right? Yep. Nashville beat the Vegas. Yeah, Knights but of course OT. they had to not complete the comeback till overtime. So another uh, free point there for uh, Vegas, and yeah, it's starting to. Uh, it's a that's of a B. Yeah, unfortunately. I, I, let me mention this real quick. Uh, third annual hockey talks program presented by Securian uh, this Thursday, uh, tomorrow, uh, before the Wild Sharks game. Um, a pre-game program with uh, John Creasel and myself at River Center from 5.30 to 6.30, talking about mental health. Uh, so uh, you can get tickets for that. Uh, go to, uh, uh, what is it, uh, wild.com? Is that what? Uh, yes. Yeah, wild.com. You can get tickets for that and come out. And uh, um, I'll talk for a little bit, but, you know, I'm not going to get up and go, uh, you know, here's why I have mental health. Now, here's the guy with uh, uh, with no legs. <laughs> Right. <laughs> you know, here's here's why my life has been tough. Now here's John Creasel. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, but no, everybody's fighting their own battle. Tomorrow night, come on down. And then we'll watch the wild turn it around one time at a time. That doesn't make any sense. One time at a time. Man. Yeah, you heard what I said. Yeah, you're right, though. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. You know, right, uh, in the boy. past, I've had a couple of people go, how come you don't do public speaking events like John does? And I go, well, I have both of my legs. I don't have a compelling story. Right. Um. Yeah. Yeah. But... What is it? What is the the Carlin joke? Uh, Banana Republics run out of khakis. khakis. Yeah, we have all the no. Uh, what's the other bit he does? Uh, the espresso machine is jammed. Right. Are those my great. problems? Yeah. I mean, what am I going to complain yeah. about? Right. Hootie and the Blowfish is breaking up. God, it's such <laughs> a great funny. bit. <laughs> White people are the reason people have the blues. <laughs> So anyway, anyway, so yeah, so that's happening tomorrow night. So big, big day, and uh, you guys have things planned uh, um, for uh, for uh, uh, outside of the initials. Uh, yeah, well, we were just talking. Sauce and I were just talking about that off yeah. here. I have a couple of things planned, but uh, we can get a couple of other things locked up before tomorrow night. Okay, good, 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 good. Because in case, like, uh, you know, I die in a car crash on the road, yeah, or something right? Like that, you know, or, or I think the schedule would probably slightly change if we found yeah, that out. In case my be... car just accidentally drives into a bridge, I'd be devastated. <laughs> And who would watch the Valley? It doesn't give us a lot of time to replace him on the major on Friday. That's true. I That's, wouldn't yeah. love that if that happened. Oh, thanks, man. Well, Tim Nelson will be there. Oh, that made play. my heart warm. All right, I guess Nelly yeah. could fill in. That's yeah, fine. Right. Nelly's right. coming? Yeah. Yep. The That's tributes right. and stuff. It was this just oh, dude, you're going to have to do a lot of editing. Yeah. Right. Well, you, know, you know Abbott's going to make just, you do that. We could yeah. just play some stupid Martin montage. Yeah. From yesterday. Would you put together a montage of me saying things about jugs? Uh, yeah, of course, but it have to be with you know, right music. You know, you couldn't. Yeah, well, you can't play music. <laughs> no. Well, no, no, are you are, we just give, are you giving us clips. permission to have you know Rocket Club though and Chris Hockey songs underneath it because that would help. No, that doesn't work. Why? I'm going up north. Uh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they don't fit, you know, they don't, yeah. Indeed, my And I friend. might not be going up yeah, north. Yeah, somebody you know I mean? in the background's gonna go. I doubt it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Louis Nord. Yeah. Like, what, Lord? <laughs> yeah, Lord. Wow. Do you have a cold? And my dad will be devastated. Well, he'll be in the back seat. So. Wow. Why is he in the back? Because <laughs> he deserves to be. He won't listen. <laughs> Chris dresses him up like Jessica Tandy and <laughs> does dri- driving Miss Daisy. Pull your hands up. Jessica Tandy, when she was alive, Woodhawk. Thanks for throwing that last part in. Because I, I would guess she's dead. <laughs> yeah, but I She was it. like 96 years old 30 years ago. I bet she died in the 90s. Yeah, is she looking she for D? She died in 94. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, man, 94. So 1991, Jessica Tandy, would you? She looking for D? <laughs> how old was she in Driving Miss Daisy? Thirty-two. Uh, well, how she... often do we, we reference that movie? And Zach and Brad probably have no idea what oh, we're they talking get the reference, about. I she was eighty-nine. She was eighty-nine in that movie. Wow, she was hot. Wait, no, hold on, start over. She was Rewind. Warm. I mean, they're warm back there. Turn, turn the heat was, down a little bit. Hang on here. Oh my God, is he? Are you doing math? She died at eighty-five, so she was eighty-one. No, what? seventy-nine. Dear God, what you, you know? What? Forget it. She yeah. was old. I didn't know who we're talking about anymore. I forgot. Hey, Hawk. Yes, sir. Eleanor Roosevelt when she was alive. Would you? Thanks for throwing that last part in. <laughs> yeah, of course he would. <laughs> hey, Chris. Uh, yes. Joan of Arc. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, wait a minute. Right now, or when she was alive? This is a tricky one. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Wow. Uh, Careful. 
I don't know, man. I like Joan of Arc. She built that boat. Ow. <laughs> I just took my toenail off. Oh, never mind. She died at 19. You're okay. <laughs> I, I was. I, I just, I even, I just I looked it up. Think about We're that. Good. Oh, That's Lord. why I was like, be careful. That's a real small window, too. Ooh. You know what I mean? Yeah, she did die. She was 19 years old when she died. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's pretty young to be a complete badass. But I guess, in, you know, in the what, yeah. 1400s, yeah. life expectancy was what? Maybe you lived to be 12. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what, what was the average life expectancy in the 1400s? In the 30s. Maybe in the, yeah, yeah, mid to high 30s, maybe. Probably 40s. Maybe 40s at the most. But uh, uh, So she was uh, 19 and kicking some ass. In what year? Uh, let's see, 14, she was born in 1412. 14, 1412. Um, it was 400 years before the War of 1812. Yeah. Way yeah. better math. Yeah, well, um, let's see, uh, with modern hunter-gatherer population estimated an average life at birth of 33 years, uh, 60% reached uh, an age between, uh, no, okay, here you go, 39. 39? 39, 39, yeah. All right. There you go. So while she was kicking some ass, she was probably having a midlife crisis. Yeah, probably so. Well, yeah, I and, mean, and probably I I don't know things about stuff. Probably going through menopause. <laughs> <laughs> the I mean, math the checks flashes, out. Yeah, yeah. The time works when you're fighting. You know the barbarians. You know, and you're all you're fighting Conan, and uh, and Richter. Yeah. <laughs> And Max. Ooh, speaking of that. Oh, Max is there? Yes. I, uh, on tour. Him and the other six. I watched that uh, movie yesterday, um, Late Night with the Devil. Oh, yeah? I did, yeah. I'll tell you about All it right. later if you'd like. Review when we get back. And sure. then tons of sports news. Legitimately, there's a billion things to talk about after this. Power to Morning Show fan. The fan. Don't miss out when breaking Benjamin and Daughtry rock the Mayo Clinic Health System Events Center in Mankato on April 9th. Head over to KFM.com, make the keyword calendar to get your tickets today. But caller 11 right now will win your way in with a pair of tickets. That's 1-800-330-5326. Good luck. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome, Corey. Thank you. Hey, uh, what's welcome. your name? Uh, sausage? Yeah. What actual date was your wedding? Uh, it was March 24th. 24th. Okay, cool. Yeah. Because I have this in now, so it makes sense because I loaded this in. One year ago today, but I'm sure I recorded it the night of your wedding in Vegas. Oh, no. Do you remember this? No. Hockey, get out of here, you slut. Your mother's here. You slut. That was my dad. That your was dad. your dad. Yeah, because yeah. I went into Bally's. I oh, did yeah. what they call uh, in the business pulling a hockey. Yeah. Yeah, and went into uh, Harrah's, I should say, and did some gambling while you guys were out dancing and partying at the Harrah's Outdoor Bar, which, which is the best bar. Wales, yeah. yeah, yeah. That was a very drunk afternoon. Oh, oh my! I fell Lord. shoulder first into a slot machine. Yeah, at, it was a four point yeah. nine on the Richter scale. Uh, oh God! I woke up the next day. I'm like, I think I broke my shoulder blade. John and I were playing slots, and I tripped over. I don't know what it was, and I just basically, giant penis. yeah, ta- form tackled the slot machine. And Seam Bear at one point said, "That's the best football play you've ever made." The juice is loose. <laughs> I remember a Jägermeister bottle being poured into these gigantic oh, shots God. glasses at Harris. And, yeah, and I'm like, yeah. I don't know how I'm going to do this. And it took me. I mean, I, you know who bought all that? Yeah, I think. Tommy did one. Uh, I bought a bunch yeah, of Jagermeister and a bunch. I drank a bunch of Jagermeister. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, two weeks from today, we'll be there. You should have been there. Hey, where'd you go? Pulled a hockey. Yeah. Yeah, you did. <laughs> My dad. No. Oh. oh. Dwight was standing at Excalibur. That's wildly inappropriate. <laughs> but I, I know that's a lie because you wouldn't step foot in Excalibur. Oh, I didn't go there. He met me. <laughs> Officer Johnson is a whore. <laughs> is that real? <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. I love that show. Yeah, it's yeah. the best. Just the dryness of that show. Oh, it's so good. Anyway, there you go. Yeah, yeah, slut. <laughs> Have you seen the episode? I think it's a newer episode where who's the lady cop? Is it Trudy? Weigel. No, the... Yeah, Trudy Weigel. Yeah, where she... 
walks in and just starts MFing all of them because she won the lottery. Yep. And then who's the guy that wears the short shorts? Uh, that would be a Dangle. Dangle yeah, holds up the, the like the local paper and it just says lottery makes massive mistake. <laughs> no one won as she's just MFing everybody. Yeah. yeah. Well, the great thing is she goes, uh, you know, uh, my big uh, <laughs> uh, and then uh, what's his name from Mound? Oh, yeah. The, the, the yeah. African American officer comes in, says the same thing, and then yeah. Jim goes, hey, for the record, you weren't the first person. <laughs> it's <laughs> so good. You. Dude, that show's brilliant. It's so good. It's so good. Yeah. All right, should we do sports? I know you want to get to a movie review. Yeah, we got a, yeah, yep. a million sports to get Time to. Time now well. for Front Page Sports, front page presented sports. by Holiday Station Thank Store. You, Holiday Day. Station Stores, wake up at Holiday. You can get uh, Red Bull. Buy two, get one free at Red Bull. 8.4 ounce Red Bull cans. Hell just, yeah, uh, dude. Just walk in there and go, I want that one and that one, and I'll pay for those two, and then uh, I'm going to take this one for free. And I'll go, that's fine. That's the deal. Buy two, get one free. Red Bull at Holiday, all Holiday Station stores. Pretty sweet. That's pretty cool. All right, let's talk about some Vikings that are on the move. Remember uh, kicker Greg Joseph? He's oh, yeah. on the move. Signing with the Green Bay Packers. No kidding. Yeah, which is a little bit strange, right? What if this is a reverse Daniel Carlson? Because the Packers have Anders Carlson. Yep. But they're signing Greg Joseph. Now, maybe it's just going to be a kicking competition. But what if Joseph wins and we take Carlson and then we turn Anders Carlson into Daniel Carlson, That'd his brother? Uh, we Brett, have did, John Parker Romo, what the is this, XFLer. The Carlson Parkway? Brett, didn't you say yesterday that your Packers have three kickers? He left. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, on, Greg well, Joseph. time to shine. Greg Joseph had a uh, franchise record, 61-yarder with the Vikes, longest in franchise history. And if you remember, the uh, the London game from two years oh, ago, yeah. he went 5-for-5, five five, including the game winner, did miss an extra point that made it interesting, but went 5-for-5, five five, had the double doink that uh, Bursich lost his mind over, which was awesome. So he has a, a couple big moments with the Minnesota Vikings, but it's over for Greg Joseph. Oh, so who's our kicker now? John Parker Romo. He's 26 years old yeah! from the XFL. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know who that is, Hawk. Yeah, of course. I'm sorry. It's uh, JPR. Yeah. You love the XFL. I do. Isn't he the uh, Napster guy? Absolutely. No. No more questions. So in London, uh, Greg Joseph bombed five field goals. Yep. And Lewis Seen's leg fell apart and Rosie Gut laughed for 20 straight minutes. Yeah, that's Rosie. the tight rim situation. Oh, okay. Also former Vikings on the move. Remember Cordero Patterson? Well, he's yeah. now a Pittsburgh Steeler. Whoa. Two years, $6 million. Whoa. NFL's all-time leader with uh, nine kick return touchdowns. And now that they have those new kickoff rules, maybe he's back in play. Because how about this? Do you know, uh, do you know how many returns, kick returns he had last season? With it, what Atlanta, right? Was it yeah, Atlanta, Atlanta last yeah. year? If memory serves, he was given the green light, wasn't he? Like, go if you want to go. Probably more than most people, yeah. yeah. Seven. Wow. That's all. And I think that's why they're changing yeah, the rules. For sure. yeah. Is you that's have somebody that was a job. You get somebody that's dynamic like Cordero, and you give him seven chances a year to return yeah. a kick. That's dumb. Congratulations. Let him go. Congratulations. Boy, they're doing some interesting things in Pittsburgh, aren't they? They got nineteen yeah. quarterbacks. They're they're lifting weights with sunglasses on. Well, you have to. Have to. Yeah. There's the dude, by the way. There's the dude. The dude's here. Look at him. Look at the dude. It's been hey, a while. Zach, let him know we're on the day. radio. Tell him so he doesn't start throwing we're on the uh, radio. So, so he doesn't swear. So he doesn't call. The dude gets it. He saw the light outside. He, know, oh, yeah, he, no, he just, knows. You know, he ain't been, it's been a while. He, I don't think he's going to swear. See if he remembers how to turn up his headphones. He, he probably will figure it out. Hi, hi, Mark. How are you? What's up, buddy? How are you, man? It's been a there minute. Are, it has been a minute, dude. I, I didn't know you and Sauce never crossed paths. I didn't know it had been that long since you worked here. Well, dude, it's it's coming up on twenty years. Man. That seems impossible. I yeah. thought you were long. I thought you were here Me longer too. than that. If that makes sense, you know what I'm saying? No, I mean I. So I was in radio total a decade, but only two years here at the fan, mm. and it was my last two years. And it's what felt I, like longer. Than wow. That. When did we go to? <laughs> when did we go to Alcatraz then? One of those first two. Well, again, remember, I was still an intern because yeah. I didn't go with. It was just you and Star, and you oh, took the dude. Right. You weren't there. I wasn't there. I bet it was like 2004. Holy Is the balls. infamous uh, Alcatraz <laughs> trip. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I heard, you guys, I heard you guys teasing that when I was driving in. And <laughs> there's a couple things I do have to correct. One, I, I was not on my way to becoming a major league pitcher. I, I got to oh. be. Was I a good pitcher when I was young? Yes. 
And I'm one of those cautionary tales that for kids who do play baseball now, I'm one of those stories that why there's like pitch counts for kids so they don't trash their arm the way I did. Mm. But yeah, I do still have a giant one forearm. Uh, prove it. Well, oh, we I, did, I already this. did this morning in the show. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's the dude we love uh, right there. It doesn't feel like it's been yeah, 20 see? years. Yeah, that has nothing to do with baseball anymore. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> but, uh, no, so when I heard you guys talking about Alcatraz and, and Chris says, uh, I think he'll be okay talking about that story. Uh, I'm okay talking about it, but it is weird now. I mean, I got a 13-year-old son. Right. Who's I very... actually do sell real estate, so I'm trying to be 20 <laughs> years into my yeah. game here, and uh, I'm trying to be respectable, but but damn it, that is a good story. I, yeah. I'm actually sadly still proud of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I would be too. Yeah. How can you not I be, would right? be, yeah, hell yeah. I seized the moment. Yeah, there <laughs> can't be a lot of you that did that. You seized something. <laughs> I've always took pride in, like, I, I have to be possibly the only person on planet Earth who pulled off that Alcatraz stunt. Yeah. Because there's only, like, prison guards who would have had access to the roof. But you got to think one of them did it, right? I mean, come on. Sure. I was not thinking about them when it was going down, though, so I can promise you that. (laughs) Tie down. (laughs) Well, that is Mark Duvall, the dude, and he is here to uh, to talk about his Rushmore and his podcast and much, much more. But we're right in the middle of sports, so you just make yourself comfortable there, dude. Oh, sorry, man. I I didn't barge in. I was this No, you're good. Dude, no, no, that's how we do it. I wanted you to come in here so you weren't nervous. Just come in, sit down, start talking. I don't know if I've been nervous ever really so i'm, I'm okay fair uh the nfl is going to play two games on christmas day in 2024 it's Man, a wednesday dude. this year Son now oh, they God. have played 30 games on christmas day since 1971 so like the concept of christmas day football not new but now they're at the point where even if it's a wednesday they're going to do it uh, so there were uh, three games last year there's going to be two this year and those uh, those teams have not been uh, announced yet, but they will be teams that will have played the previous Saturday. So um, it's the equivalent of going Sunday to Thursday, right? Now yeah. it's Saturday into yeah. Wednesday. You hope it's <sighs> a home game, right, Hawk? Yeah, you hope it's a home game. I I mean, I well, I would not be shocked if we get one of those games. Well, somebody, a that couple, blow. couple people suggested that would be the perfect time to have the Vikings and Packers play their last game of the season. Yeah. At Lambeau. Yeah. Because you're trying to sell the Christmas angle. Dude. Yuck. <laughs> My birthday in Lambeau. Yeah. And, yeah. and you know the uh. worst part, honestly, truly, honestly, the worst thing about playing on Christmas Day is Christmas Eve. Because you have to be gone yeah, on Christmas Eve. Yeah. yeah and yeah. that's the best part, right, is, is being at home on Christmas uh. Eve getting ready for Christmas. And that's all of us. Like, all of us. Yeah. yeah. Everybody who has to go on the road, or, or gets to, I should say, go on the road trips, would have to leave it about noon on Christmas Eve, and you wouldn't get back till if you're the late game. My God. Yeah, and I bet if it were the Packers and Vikings, that would probably be the night game. That sucks. Uh, so in 2024, <laughs> the only talk. day of the week that will not have games is Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. Wow. Every other day at least has one game. Because the if not the, more, the Black Friday bit worked last year. That yeah, was and fun. also week For, one yeah, this up. year. Friday night, the Eagles oh, yeah. are in Brazil, and that game is exclusively on Peacock. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's fine. Man, Brazil. Yep. Yeah, man. I wonder how far away that is. Dude, do you have any idea? I have no idea. Make something up. Yeah. Six how far is Brazil? Yeah. Um, I don't know. They, there's a lot less hair involved. Jeez. <laughs> You probably go fast. No, oh, sorry, that's a Brazilian that's not what we're talking about. That's a Brazilian. Joke. I forgot no, sports it, yeah. segment. Sports yeah. segment. Well, not really. You've heard this show. <laughs> uh, Aaron Rodgers will not be running for vice president. Oh. RFK picked something called Nicole Shanahan. Oh, really? The coach's sister. <laughs> um, Brazil to Minnesota is four thousand nine hundred and seventy-three miles. How long is the flight? I think it was like. Seven or eight, I think, if I remember Dave Schwartz was talking uh, about that. It, it, with one stop, it's 14 hours. Wow. Okay. Hmm. It's, a, it's a long way as north to south. Yes, bitch. <laughs> Nine hours without a stop. <laughs> that ain't so bad. No. You could drive there if you want. It's only 4,000 miles. You can't. Can't? No, they, uh, they they will not let you, uh, they cannot build roads between North and South America. This America. Yeah, you don't tell me what to <laughs> yeah, use, Zach. Yeah, I, can I mean, go ahead and go want. down there. Yeah, all of it's America. I mean, you can traver- traverse it, but Tra- you, you can't. You can traverse it. Yeah, you can traverse it. You can traverse. 
All right, the dudes here. We'll do what really matters in a second. We'll uh, we got to get the Chris's movie review. We want to talk about uh, the dudes podcast and some Mount Rushmores and argue about some random stuff. This is the Power Trip Morning Show on the fan. I've been trying for so long. Firewood uh, Gospel Choir and Misery. Back home to me. The fan. Your Minnesota Timberwolves are on the road to the playoffs, and you could be there for every electrifying moment. Head over to our contest page to find out how you can join their playoff priority access and register for a chance to win a grand prize of tickets to every Timberwolves home game during the 2024 NBA playoffs. KFN.com keyword contest to enter. My friend Ted, but don't wake up. Patrick Morning Show. It's uh, 626. Mark Duvall, the dude, in studio. We're we talking just, about his podcast. We series. were just talking about this off the air. When Mark, uh, the dude, Duvall still worked here, we had like a four share. I know. Isn't that something? Come a long way, the baby. Good old days. I, uh, I said that to Hawk when I was talking to him about, you know, getting booking him to be a, a guest on my podcast was... Apparently, the best thing that happened to the fan was me leaving. Yeah, that's what everybody's <laughs> yeah, always we, said. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's in all yeah. the boss's offices. Yeah. Right. There's a plaque on Thank the wall. Thank God he's gone. For your last day, you leaving in the elevator, yeah. and there's a plaque. Yeah. Oh, man. Did you ever work in this building then? I did, yeah. Okay, cool. Must have been real close, though, huh? I think it was uh, that w- Corey and I were talking about that. I think it was a little over a year that I was in this building because, again, I only put in a couple months at the old Bloomington studios. And then we all moved here as a big group. But yeah, it's, I mean, like I was saying to these guys, talk about a full circle moment, man. Like I, walking back into this building, but for the intention to be a guest on on your guys' show, it's yeah. it's a little surreal, but it's exciting, man. Like I, I, when I booked hockey, I just thought I'd get lucky enough, have them do one episode on a podcast. The next thing I know, I'm sitting here talking to you guys about cool, it. cool, man. So. We got stories, man. It's fun. Pretty it's trippy. Uh, but right now we got to do. That's what really matters, right? That's right. Ba-da, ba-da. Yeah. So let's just get a couple things out of the way, and then we can get to all the uh, the fun stuff, shall we? Yes, sir. Uh, I'll do sports. You do with something else. Uh, hard knocks changes. You guys seen these? Do you like these? Hate these? Do you yeah. know about these? I have yeah. not seen I saw them. them. Yeah. So Chris, you watched the in season one this year, right? With the You're Dolphins, damn right? So they're making some big changes. From now on, the in-season version of uh, HBO's Hard Knocks will follow an entire division. All four teams oh. from one division. Oh. The preseason Hard Knocks mostly staying the same. It's still going to be one team. But under the new rules, teams don't have to be on the show if they have a first-year head coach, which they've had that rule for a while. Yeah. Um, if they're a part of the in-season show during the upcoming year or the following year, they don't have to be on it. So are they announcing the divisions two years out? I mean, based on that rule, it sounds like they're yeah, going to say this year it's so-and-so and next year it's so-and-so. Uh, and then also, if they've been on uh, Hard Knocks in the last eight seasons, they don't have to accept. In the past, it had been ten seasons. Now it's only eight. So if you're a big fan of that show and if you like football, it's hard not to be. I it's do. a pretty awesome show. Now you're going to get an entire division in season. You know what that tells me? That uh, the editors and producers had a hard time coming up with enough good stuff for it to be just one team. Yeah. Because there were times yeah. they were stretching, like they sure. would go in somebody's apartment and watch them feed a baby goat. And you'd be like, yeah, why do what cares? the hell is going yeah, on? Yeah. But <laughs> how, how about just by definition, though, if you have all four teams in a division, you're getting the entire spectrum. You're getting the leader the bottom feeder and well the teams set, that yeah. are fighting for that's spots, correct, right? You're, that's true. Even if you don't have drama behind the scenes, from a from a football perspective, you're getting the entire spectrum of success and failure. So there's just built in, all, all of a sudden, you have, well, we're going to have the, the division winner. We're going to have the teams that are fighting for a while. You're just going to have drama. Yeah. It'll yeah. be great. I've never watched the in-season mm-hmm. one. I've oh, only good. watched the pre- oh thanks PA. I've only watched the uh, preseason one, but I've never seen an episode where they make the cuts. That's still the best. I don't wa- I've lost a job too many times. That's too close to home. <laughs> but what oh, really matters that. is this: the juice is loose. <laughs> he still loves that button. He loves I it. Love it. Hang on to it. I saw a movie called Late Night with the Devil. Oh no! Um, play a little bit of the trailer so you get an idea of what's going on. Um, on Halloween night, nineteen seventy-seven. America gathered around for a live TV event that shocked the nation. What happened 
was real. What you are about to see is the recently discovered master tape of what went to air that night. Okay, here's the thing. Yeah, right. I saw it last night. It's uh, like 100% on everything. Everybody's loving it. The reason it's so loved is because it's completely original. I've never seen anything like it. It's scary, sure. And the little girl who, who uh, um, is one of the main characters, real, real good. I don't know who the main woman is, but she looks just like Robin Wright Penn, but that's not who it is. Um, and the main guy was the Scarecrow in the Batman movies. Uh, he's a face you can't forget. Wait, that's Killian Murphy. No, no not Scarecrow then. What's his name? David not Lee Roth. Yeah, but we, no, brilliant. He was he was in those movies. He was one of like Joker's accomplices. Oh, okay. I oh, got it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. He wants. He's Joker's thug. Is that's what it. He's, okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, he a face you can't forget. Oh yeah, I know this guy. Yeah, that guy right yeah. there. Yeah, he's um, the guy that laughs right in. Um, yeah. He laughs right in. Is it uh, Commissioner Gordon's face or is it one? Of, I forget who it is. Yeah. He laughs in somebody's oh, yeah. face in the dark night. He's uh, in the back of the ambulance. Harvey Dent's go. that back there. That's yeah. right. Yeah, Harvey Dent. Yeah, and uh, he's got Rachel on his name tag. Rachel. Oh, got yeah, it. yeah. Hello, beautiful. That's, that's <laughs> a Muppet, but yeah. Uh, Louis Armstrong. <laughs> Brilliant. That's anyway, <laughs> the cast is great. The concept is completely original. There are some scary moments, but I'm going to tell you right now, do yourself a favor. Don't read a thing about the film because... The, what's going on in the film is has very little to do with what you know about the film right now. The guy's Johnny Carson, uh, and it's called Late Night with the Devil because he does something special on Halloween because his ratings are are lagging. The stuff that's going on around that, though, I did not see coming at all. That's why the movie's getting such great reviews. Not because it's scary as hell. It is kind of scary, but it's a really, really well done movie. Mm. It's called Late Night with the Devil. I encourage you to see it, but bring a pair of extra pants. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm out. I'm not seeing it. That sucks. What? I, I want to see it, but I don't like scary movies. It's not that yeah, bad. I'm, not, I'm, I'm not telling you, that. it's not scary. Um, it's it's definitely not hereditary. I, I still have a problem sleeping because of hereditary. I've that never seen that. movie scared piss What, well, your parents have sleep apnea? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, ones uh, in the family. The NFL trade deadline approved to be pushed back one week. So now oh, it's going to be... Thanks, PA. <laughs> so it's going to be the Tuesday after week nine. There were a lot of teams pushing for after week ten. Yeah! But they compromised and met at week nine. So it used to be after week eight. And I heard Brady Quinn... Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Uh, on the show before us, he just thinks this is a precursor to an 18-game regular season. No, oh, I, yeah. I think you could argue whether they keep it at 17 or 18. It doesn't hurt to push it back a week because you've Definitely. added a week, right, from 16 to yeah. 17. But he's just saying it just makes more sense that historically it was halfway through a 16-game season, so why wouldn't it be halfway through an 18-game season? So they're at uh, week nine, which is fun. Hey, the dude. Yeah, yeah. As we do what really matters here. Yeah. I'm going to play you a sound bite that I've been playing on this show <clears throat> for a very long time. I want to know if you recognize this voice. And I play it a lot. I wonder if Corey still remembers who this is. Ride or die. Whoa. One more time, please. You got it. Hold on. This was uh, loaded in on the on November 22nd, 2003. Hmm. Ride or die. Dude, I'm drawing a blank. What is that? He was one of you. He's one of us. What? He's he, one of me, one of us. Yeah. One of, one of, one of your crew. One of my crew. And he actually did the same job you did here just for a moment. Ride or die. Is that Nelly? It's Joe Birchall. That's Birch? Yeah. Do you remember Joe Birchall, Corey? No. Ride or die. Yeah. I, I, oh, my God. I vaguely I remember the name, but I, I don't remember yeah. that. Like, I remember, we've played that soundbite for A ever. million times. Right, right, exactly. Wow. I always thought yeah. it was a caller. No. Wow. That was him. That's Same. Birch Hill. Just a random caller. One of my one of my very he had just left the radio station and one of my very first endorsements that I did was for a uh, um a motorcycle dealership and he was he had gone from here to there and bought advertising and gave me a motorcycle and he called me one day and, and said nothing else, just ride or die. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. And so I loaded it in. Oh uh, Joey, man, he had a screw loose. Oh. I love that man. I love him. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. That whole group of you did. He's still with us? <laughs> Oh, sure, sure, sure he does. But Mark, think about that too. When I first got an, an internship at, at uh, Clear Channel KFAN way back in the day, 
everybody was just like, oh, you're on the air? Here's a car. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going, man, this is sweet. I got to get a gig here. Everybody's just getting free stuff. Chris just gets random motorcycles yeah, from motorcycle. guys. What happened? This is the best. <laughs> you get a car and you get a car. It was Oprah. Get, it yeah, was, it was yeah. Oprah. Unbelievable. <sighs> Times have changed good. a little bit. I uh, want things from random guys. Okay, calm oh, down, Zach. Put your hands uh, down. You know your mic's on? We'll yeah. talk after, buddy. <laughs> you <Yeah. laughs> right. an update on your podcast? Yeah, the dude has that big forearm for a reason. <laughs> yeah, did we show him the forearms yet? Have we taken off our... Uh, I haven't seen him yet. No, you want... You, you want yeah, show me. Yeah, 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 hold on, hold on. Let's wait till the break and we'll film it so people can oh, there see you go. it. You gotta see the Ooh. difference. Because we're big on that kind of thing here at Modern yeah. Radio. Hey, Sauce, uh, last thing here uh, before we take a break and come back and do uh, uh, the, all the other stuff that's going to be more interesting. Oh. Remember yesterday we talked about how the uh, the DraftKings odds for J.J. McCarthy to go number two yeah. went from 25 to 1 to 5 to 1. Yeah. They it's a moved, big move. They moved again, didn't they? They did. As of last night, Jaden Daniels is the favorite to go number two at minus 125. Drake May was plus 150. J.J. McCarthy plus 275. So it's weird that it's still a long shot, but it's just getting smaller and smaller and yeah. smaller that there is momentum that he's going to be as high as number two. Wow, man. Yeah, which in a weird way may hurt the Vikings because I would guess that if Jaden Daniels is at the third pick. I don't think you could trade up enough to get the Patriots to move out of that spot. That would be my guess. Because I think everybody has a guy, their number one guy, and I, I think that Jaden Daniels is the Patriots' number one guy. And if he's there at three, I don't know if he Why could Why do you out. think that? I just think that, that 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 is the guy that they've identified from some of the reading and other things that I've heard on the internet and Twitter and all that. But that would mean, though, then the Drake May would be at the fourth pick. So, you know, hmm. it might be a win-win for the Vikings. Yeah, that'd be huge, man. Yeah. That's who the, you know. That's How about this? Get. One of the props on DraftKings, too. The over-under for quarterbacks in the first round, four and a half. I would take the over. Right. The over is the big favor right now at minus 230. But if you think it's just going to be the four, and then Bo Nix and Michael Penix and others fall to round two, under four and a half is plus 180. Yeah, I, I, I would take the over, yeah. Okay. Uh, more of what really matters after this. The dude is here. Chris will uh, deck your hands up. You guys. We'll stream uh, that whole thing on Instagram. KFN one zero zero three. Check us out there. The forearm reveal. Yeah, the forearm reveal. He's got four arms. This guy. <laughs> Twenty years in the making. Uh, more of the power trip after this on the fan. The fan. Fan. We're live right now. KFN.com. Flash watch. Instagram. All that jazz. We're about to see the dudes. Fantastic forearms, in case you want to see just how big one side is compared to the other. And it's not from Yurkin. Uh, uh, not, not exclusively. Not just from that. Okay, cool. Got it. Are we live right now? Does it look like we're live right now? I don't know. Zach, Zach's just live? hovering behind me on his phone. I, don't, I never know what he's doing. You never know what he's doing? <laughs> he's real close to you right now. Yeah, I think he's zooming in. Has, has Mark removed his clothing yet? No, he's still fully clothed. Oh, you want? Okay. Yeah, we need to see that for... Uh, I don't know how we're going to see it at... He's got a Willie Nelson sweatshirt. Of course he does. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love the Willie. That, that's, uh, All right, I mean, do this real quick. There he goes. Look at this difference here. So yep. here's the non pitching arm. Jeez. Okay. <laughs> there was the pitching arm. Jesus. <laughs> so yeah. there. I can't see it. Why can't I see it? Where's it at? There you go. You looking? Yeah, I'm looking. Like, you can't see. I can't, can't tell see from here. Yeah, he's fine and anyway. it used to be way more used predominant be, than that. Used to be worse. Yeah. yeah. Look Good at you. for you, man. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> so what'd you what'd you tear? Like your uh, ball sack? <laughs> Why'd you stop pitching? Uh, well, it was 1993. Was the last time I pitched. I I now later in life realized I needed Tommy John surgery. Oh no, really? But in '93, on a 16 year old kid, they're not doing that. Who'd you pitch for? Uh, well, as a sophomore, I made the varsity team as at Park Center, Ooh. Uh, but only as a pitcher. Yeah. And he, again, I'm a sad cautionary tale. I never even got to play a game. It was an indoor gym practice because of rain. And uh, I was pitching to my, to my catcher in a gym, and I had been battling elbow problems, and I threw a pitch after I felt I was pretty warmed up. 
and just shooting pains in both directions. Ugh. The arm was just <laughs> hanging <Crossy>. there. Mark. <laughs> That's hot. Ick. Your arm was just hanging there? Yeah. So, you know, I went to the trainer. They iced me down. My parents brought me to a few sports doctors, and they just said, sorry, kid, you have so much scar tissue in your elbow, your pitching is done. Hmm. And like a uh, 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 immature candy ass, I, I quit baseball. Bye-bye. Yeah, there you go. Cool. There he goes. Abby was there. <laughs> no, and that is a regret. I mean, I still, I, I always associated baseball with being a pitcher. Yeah. So when I was told I couldn't do it, and I was no longer on varsity, by the way, because when I had to tell the coach I'm done, he's like, well, but, sorry, bud, I, I put you on the roster as a pitcher. I don't have space for you as a as a position player. <laughs> oh, Rosie, stop laughing. <laughs> don't tear your arm up. Yeah. yeah. Not his fault. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, so... But yeah, here I am. Yeah, look, you could have been successful. <laughs> could have been. Now I live through my son. So. Yeah, man. All right, should we talk uh, Mount Rushmore here in a second or yeah. what? All right, before we do that, though, because it's sponsored, let's uh, let's get to the uh, the old wild news. Brought to you by our friends at Catalyst Supply and what? CatalystSupplyCo.com. That's right. Thank you, Catalyst. Yeah, uh, the wild are off until tomorrow when they host the Sharks. But uh, bad news last night for the wild because the Vegas Golden Knights lost in overtime, so they got a point. Which brings them up to 86. So the Wild Trail, the final wild card spot by nine. And they're also three points behind the Blues. So they would need a mathematical miracle to catch Vegas. And they can't let the Blues catch Vegas. So that's a mess. Uh, the Wild now do have a game in hand on both of them. Remember like a week ago, the Knights had two games in hand? Now it's the opposite. The Wild have one game in hand because they haven't played since what, Saturday? Correct. I think yes. it's since Saturday. Uh, two of the final 11 games are against Vegas. The uh, Wild do have 11 games to go. Five at home, five on the road, and then they close up against Seattle. There you go. Well, hopefully the uh, rest has done them well, and they can uh, put a streak together and well, they need, shock the world. They need nine or 10 or 11 wins out of the final 11. Probably all 11. Probably close point. to all 11. To even have a shot. We'll see. Our guest, Mark Duvel and his friend, John Hansen. Have a podcast. What's your Mount Rushmore? And each podcast, they talk about their Mount Rushmore of things. There's a new uh, episode out there where I'm the guest, and we talk about our Mount Rushmore of concerts that we saw. And that was a lot of fun, the mm. dude. It really was, man. Good discussion. But you guys have also discussed some other things. So I'd like some uh, insight from the, uh, your perspective on what your, uh, your Rushmore was on each of these topics, and we'll let the guys discuss. Ooh. Uh, something that's very, very close to Corey's heart. You, what was your Mount Rushmore, your four greatest ever game shows? Oh, geez. Do you even remember? Uh, I think I will. I mean, we haven't been, I mean, we've only been up and running. I think we have like eight episodes, so we're we're still very wet here. Whoa. Whoa. Um, okay, well, sorry. Thank you for that. You guys have a towel. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, so game shows. I know I had an odd one that no one really agreed with, with which was Love Connection. Um, yeah. be, and that was because I had a like a man crush on Chuck Woolery. Yeah. You know, and I loved his uh, I'll be back in two and two bit. Yeah. Yeah. That also was maybe the last time that Chuck Woolery hosted a game show in which he understood the rules. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's true. He, if you right? ever watched him host Lingo on Game Show Network, he almost never understood the game. And it wasn't that hard. God. I loved Lingo. That was a great game. But Love Connection was easy. It was just, did you like the date? You did. Would you like to go on another date? Great. We'll be back in two and two. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. not that hard. It's just really ask not. him how the date yeah. went. Does it belong on the Mount Rushmore, though, Corey? No. Of course not. <laughs> See, that's and what I, I mean. Lo yeah. I love Love Connection, but not not top four. What were the others, dude? Price is Right clearly has to be represented. Again, I'm a Gen Xer, so anytime you would be home from school, you know, Oh, yeah. Ginger ale saltines and the price is right is <laughs> kind of what it. that meant. You are yeah. correct. Well, you needed some salt. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, God, I, I'll be honest, because that was that literally was like our pilot episode mm -hmm. where we didn't even know if we were going to put that one out there. So I'm trying to. You're putting me on the spot well, on that yes. one and uh, make it up. Jeopardy. Yeah. Which I'm sure isn't on there, but oh, sure, sure, sure. God, I am trying to remember now. What, Gotta what? have the wheel. Damn it, the wheel. Yeah, I didn't. Wheel. I didn't have the wheel. I'd have Family Feud, The Wheel, Price is Right, and Jeopardy. Those would be my four. Those are pretty generic, but that's my four. Am I missing anything? Well, the, yeah. Zacho, anybody? Saucy? I'm trying to think. Um, Man, Deal or No Deal was fun in its fight. 
Yeah. But it didn't last. No, 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 no. You got to have. If, if it's 40 just years. truly on how much you loved it in the moment, when yeah, I was right. growing up, I freaking loved Press Your Luck. Yeah, Press Your Luck was great. Man, that, I mean, is it like a, yeah. an eight year old and oh, having yeah. the whammies be, oh, the you know, best. really cheesy cartoons and Peter Tamarkin before he died in a plane crash was an Rosie. awesome host. I mean, yeah. I, I don't, I don't know if Press I love your Press Your Luck great. now, but I loved it at the oh, time. It was so good though. Ten thousand dollar pyramid, I know, was on my oh, list. Yeah, Pyramid's that was there. good. Yeah, Dick that's Clark. A great... Whoa, whoa, yeah. Can I say that? Yeah, of D- course, Dick Clark. Yeah, of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was the one? Hollywood Squares. That was, yeah, that, yeah, that, that was, was mentioned. Yeah. That was fun. But that's more stage than Vanderpump, right? They all yeah. have the questions ahead of time because they all have jokes ready. That drove me nuts. Shadow Stevens for the block. Truth be told, though, Hawk, the game show episode, I, I, as you can probably tell just by my reaction yeah. sitting here, don't listen to I it. don't have a ton of passion about that uh, topic. It was well, like I said, let's just see how this chemistry works. You know, John Hansen approached me with this, and you know John, yeah. obviously, for, for decades now, just like uh, you and I. And John called me, I don't know, it was probably a couple months ago, two, three months ago, tops. And he, he did. He moved to uh, just outside of Scottsdale about four years ago. And him and I met in the mid-90s in radio, and we've been really good, really tight friends ever since. So we, we do stay in touch. He calls me out of the blue, and, and he says, I got an idea. Do you want to do a podcast? And my initial reaction was like, hell no. <laughs> Why? Yeah, people don't <laughs> make money what? those. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, speaking of Dick Clark's, I go, every swinging Dick Clark <laughs> has a podcast now. So why, what, what's going to make us so special? Who will want to listen to us two, you know, fools? And he says, I have, a, I have a really cool premise, though. And I said, okay, what, what, do you, what do you got? And he said, what if we do a podcast built on What's Your Mount Rushmore, where we, you and I just discuss our four favorite things of really anything and every, any topic we can come up with, good, bad, ugly, stupid, funny, sports, TV, movies. And I'm like, I, I thought literally for a few seconds and went, I'm in. So what do you need from me? Yeah. Well, and he told me, and it was pretty minimal, and here we are, and Again, it was hard to not tap into our old our old contacts, our old friendships, you know, sure. like you, Hawk. And uh, again, I'm very humbled that you jumped on how quickly you were just, yep, I'll do it. Well, and uh, one of your other topics, and I have my top four on this, was fast food. Ooh. Yeah, that's a, that's now now now, now we're we are talking. getting into money. Now we're talking. <laughs> and yeah. here are, and this is inarguable. Here are the the top the Mount Rushmore of fast food. Obviously, McDonald's. Yes. For me. Wendy's. That's a match. Hardee's. Hmm. And Taco John's. <laughs> it's inarguable. Those are the four. Man, my... Yeah. Wow. That, those are the four. I, I I mean, I like other things. Any of those available. And I'm going to guess... I mean, I love McDonald's, but it's like that song you've heard a million times. If it's available and that's, you know, I'll, I'll grab it. But I'm going Wendy's first almost every time. If there's a Taco John's, and there's not many of them. I'm going there for sure. And if there's a Hardee's, I'm eating more mayonnaise in one sitting than I've eaten in the calendar year. Because there's so much mayonnaise on a Frisco cheeseburger. Are there many Hardee's around still? No, that's what I'm saying. Not very many. Yeah. That's why it's on Rushmore. 94 through Wisconsin and all that. They're everywhere, yeah. There's not many Abraham Lincolns left either. That's why it's on the Mount Rushmore. Wow. Look at you. (laughs) Wow. See what I'm saying? That was deep. See what I'm saying? God, you're a thinker. Well, I'm... You're good at this. I am. (laughs) Did I miss anything, Zacho? No, I mean I would. Uh, I'd be a little different. I, I really, I'd throw uh, Sabaro up there. Is Sabaro fast food? I mean, it was it was fast food. It was in an Arby's. Are they still? Oh yeah, around? I guess it wasn't an Arby's, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Sabaro. Every time I hear Sabaro, I think of that episode of The Office, of course, where Michael says it's like <laughs> yeah. one of his authentic favorite. New York pizza. <laughs> it's, that's such a good. Uh, God, I love that. Yeah. yeah. I Noodles. mean, you're missing the obvious. Obviously, one. for you, raising canes is yeah, definitely top four. But yeah. uh, I mean, McDonald's has to be. It, it yeah. just has it to. It essentially be. created the entire industry, and it's still kicking ass. So McDonald's is in the top four as well. Yeah, it'd be McDonald's, Chick Fil A. Yeah, Chick Fil A deserves Taco attention. Bell. Chick Fil A is an honorable mention. They're too yeah. new for me. Too new for me. Uh, I, back in the day, Burger King was A+. plus. Burger King belongs on there. Plus, if I can't eat it on Sunday, it doesn't belong on Mount Rushmore. Yeah, good point. What, what about a sandwich option? Because I, I had Jimmy John's on my list. Yeah, mine, uh, Jersey Mike's would be on my list then if it had to be like a sandwich option. Yeah, That's a good call, too. 
That place is incredible. Subway couldn't be further from mine. And then on on the place. podcast, I did I did go into a story because Chipotle was my last spot on there. And Chipotle is on that spot because of my time working here at K-Fan. It was oh, when no. the marketing dude for Chipotle, yeah. he would show up with these decks of cards. Yeah, oh, yeah. This and every days, card man. was a burrito. And he'd just hand out decks of cards like it was, you know, beads at Mardi Gras. Yeah, <laughs> that guy rocks. I know God. exactly what you're talking about. God, he was awesome. Yeah, if that guy's still out there, please come by. He, uh, I'll show you my jugs for some burritos. I'll touch him in areas he doesn't want to be touched. <laughs> you know, well, that that's sounds aggressive. That's more than you needed to do, probably. Yeah, you could have just asked. Uh, <laughs> assault. Yeah, is what that is. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that I keep hot. forgetting a podcast you can edit. This we yeah, cannot, no, so no, sorry. Is, yeah, sorry. That just happened. That's <laughs> out in the open. Yeah. Uh, do, do you know I have a, uh, a Guinness World Record? You do? What? Yeah. I have the, uh, the world record, Guinness World Record. This was verified. Most times going to Chipotle without ever eating it. <laughs> it's true. That's true. I've yeah. been there hundreds of times, never eating it. But uh, my girls love it, so I go all the time. What I do, I knew, I do know that. I remember that about you, so I get it. But uh, you yeah. really do. That's I've never, that's for real. Though? Not once had a, I've never had a burrito in my life, so I've never eaten Chipotle. But uh, wow. sure, I'm the uh, you know the drug mule. I'm the one that runs and gets it and <laughs> drops it off. <laughs> Uh, That's the, awesome. the dude's podcast again is uh, is called uh, "What's Your Mount Rushmore?" And before we uh, get you out of here, I have to address the uh, elephant in the room. Oh no! Oh boy! Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> it was a bar <laughs> called Diamond <laughs> Sports Bar. Does anybody remember Diamond Sports Bar? In Anoka, right? Uh, that- technically, would, would that be Anoka? Uh, Ramsey, I agree. Ramsey, Ramsey, yeah, technically. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of softball played there. Yeah, a lot oh, of yeah. softball. Oh, yeah. I know where that is. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I'm playing this song without bar, getting in man. trouble because it, this is part of the story. So I think I'm allowed to play it. I don't know if that's true or not. Who knows? But the reason I'm playing is because <laughs> this was the early days of the Chris Hockey Band, which one I think it was still called Chris Hockey and the Poker Dogs. I and, believe uh, you're right. We were playing, and it was the very first set of three sets, Corey. Three sets, three one-hour sets. And the first set, nobody was wasted yet, so nobody was dancing. That's just how it always was. You got through the first set. Second set was a little better. Third set, it was complete destruction. Somebody was fighting. There were boobs. It was great. First set, we start playing this song. And I look, and there's John Hansen, the dude. Who else was there? Uh, at that trip, probably a couple of my buddies, yeah. probably O'Connell. Probably O'Connell, R.I.P. He would, yeah, R- yeah. R.I.P. John, and, uh, that, yeah, because so, I know we used to go and see you a lot. Yeah. Actually, at Diamonds. And, you know, because, you know, they're foos, I look down and they're all standing at the front of the stage. Right in the front of the stage. They're being supportive. Yeah, they're being supportive. supportive. They're not doing anything right. nefarious or no, shady. No, they just want to see you stand in there. close and wave to you. I'm like, okay, good. Thanks, guys. Appreciate the support. <laughs> and I noticed while we're playing this song that Jess Brasper is laughing so hard he's barely able to stand up. And I don't know why. Darren, the drummer, laughing. Why? What's going on? I have no idea. But we're playing Katrina and the Waves. I got a show to put on. They're walking on That's sunshine. Right, they're they're walking just on having sunshine. fun. What's wrong with laughing? Enjoying right. their craft. And then I look down in the very front row, standing against the stage. And there he is, with his hands on his hips, swaying back and forth to the beat of the song. Is Mark Duvel, also known as The Dude, sitting in the studio with us now all these years later, 20 years later. And his testicles are hanging out of his pants. Oh, yeah. And he's swaying back and forth to the song on tempo <laughs> to Katrina and the Waves. In front of everybody like and a their metronome. mother. Like a metronome. <laughs> and uh, it's something I, I don't think I'll ever forget. It's one of the um, greatest, most disturbing things I've ever seen on stage. So this this story is something that we end. Like, it's a long podcast. It's the longest episode we've done, the one we recorded with Hawk. And at the very end, you do get rewarded by this story because he goes into great oh, detail yeah, about much it. bigger detail. But yes. he, did, he did break me during the recording of the podcast when... Because of the song we're listening to, he remembers the song. Oh, how can you forget that? Well, I I forgot the song. Be, it, well, I'm sure I had other help yeah. of why I forgot. Right. But when you pulled that the song out of your hat that you remember that's what was being played, you broke me because yeah. I was not expecting that. In fact, I didn't even know if you'd re- recall the the story once I brought it up. But clear, you were eager to get to this story. I, I'll, <laughs> I'll say it like this, uh, Mark. If and and this is the, the parting shot. I'll say. If you ever lose your testicle sack, 
have the sketch artist come to me <laughs> because I can describe it. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> vein for vein. Oh my God. Come on, man. No. <laughs> I will never forget it. I'll never forget it. The dude, you're the best in the world. Yeah, Love you. you. Keep us up to date with what's going on on uh, What's Your Mount Rushmore podcast. Yeah, we got a website. It's just What's Your Mount Rushmore. Spell out the words. Don't be lazy. And again, you'll get access to, again, the hockey episode. Start there. Aww. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, and, and Chris really does go into some stories about the shows he's seen. That are they're really great stories. There's a lot of laughs in this sto- in this episode. Uh, and again, I thank you, my friend. You for, got it, my friend. For uh, for helping out, man. Absolutely. What's what's on your Mount Rushmore of national monuments? Ooh, <laughs> I'd have to go with the Washington Monument. Okay, that's in there. What else? Lincoln. Anything else? Mount Rushmore. I'd put Mount Rushmore. Yeah, probably. Yeah, 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 I guess sure. I felt like that was a trap, so I'll, I'll walk in. <laughs> uh, Rosie, in about thirty minutes or so, that was the dude. This is the Power Trip Morning Show on the fan. The fan.